Hello, my name is Sally Pinto, and I'm the program director for the Yonkers NORC Neighborhood Naturally Occurring Retirement Community. We serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We are under the auspices of WJCS and the Yonkers Office for the Aging. We also have a resource specialist and a nurse on staff. We conduct virtual programming when partnership with the Yonkers Public Library on a daily basis. Enjoy the program. Basically a, a series of circles here. There's a series of circles. And uh, we're going to start, I think better to logistically decide where everything will be. I think what I'm going to have you lightly do is this. Um, as you have your paper mounted, which is horizontally, okay, I'm going to take just by eye. You don't have to use a ruler because that seems too architectural. We want to be a little free loose with this. What I want to do is I want to draw a small line going down a skinny line going down the center of the paper, okay? Just like that, center of the paper, boom. Okay, see? All right, what I wanna do is I wanna split these up in four, four pieces. One, two, three, four. And then what I'll do is I'll make a dot in the middle somewhere. And I'll say that's the part that I go side to side with. Now do these lightly because you, <laughs> you're gonna need some, need some muscle power to erase those, okay? To make them look good. All right. Now I don't like I didn't get the sample out uh, quick enough. I don't know if anybody has the sample with them um, by any chance. But if you do, this is what you would do with your paper. You would split it right on the paper, right with the picture on it, in fourths. Okay, and it can help you draw your picture piece by piece and have it accurately represented as it is on the photo. Okay. All right. First thing we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to once that's established, we're going to establish a circle. Off center. Off center. So that's what we're going to do. Off center. Yeah. See how easy that is now to see? You can see where it is spatially. It's not in the center, it's off center a little bit. Right. And furthermore, what I'm going to do is these are going to be just odd circular shapes going around the outside of the center of the rows. I'm only going to start slowly and do a couple, right? And that's it. this is what I mean. See, see how I did that. If you didn't know what we were drawing right now, you definitely wouldn't still know what we were drawing because it's such an odd looking shape, right? It's such an odd looking shape. But we'll create the center, which is more complicated, and then we will go further and further out until it gets looser and easier to do. Okay. Uh, Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pattern like that. See, see that little, see that little pattern. Now everybody loves to paint flowers. They love to paint. And over the years that I've taught, let me tell you, I can't tell you how many people, when the weather gets warm, like, oh, I want to paint flowers. I want to paint flowers. So I say, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, you come to my workshop and we'll paint flowers and uh, you'll see. They're beautiful, you have fun. And see the way that looks, it looks like a little collar there, see a little collar. And, uh, and of course, you know, week goes by, they come, they come to the workshop and I'm showing them how to do a daisy. And they go, oh, no, 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 no. I, 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 I didn't know you were going to do a daisy. Daisy is simple. I can do that. I said, okay. So, what would you like to do? She goes, I would like to do a rose. <laughs> as, as, as in many cases in life, the ambition far exceeds the ability of the skill at the moment. And um, what I tell everyone to do is when you do flowers on your own, start with a daisy first, right? Because there's many, many layers to a rose. You got to be really careful. Because without those layers, 
it won't look like a road. See, that's why I'm going very slowly with you here in the center. We'll get we'll get the center going here. Right? Now, if you don't if you don't have the accompanying diagram with you now, because I couldn't get it to you, uh, what you can do is Z has it, and I'm sure she'll be more than happy to forward it to you, so that you can see it and then compare what we haven't done in the class because we either ran out of time or whatever. But you can actually see what's going on much more easily with the sample, okay? And in the center, we're going to have also a center piece like this. It's going to have another bunch of angles in there. Okay? And when you, if you've ever looked at a rose that's fully bloomed, but yet the, the center is very tight. It looks like a convoluted angle shape. I mean, it's just all over the place. So what we do is we try to make the best of it by getting the larger ones that have the predominant you know, focus of our attention, get those dominant and make those dark enough and bright enough. And then we can see as we go along how the others fill in, the others will fill in. Right now, it doesn't look like much. Looks like a bunch of, it's crazy. It looks crazy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, this, this piece right here, this one we made before, I'm going, that's going to be a pedal, but I'm going to make it a little bit tipsy turvy here. I'm not, I don't want to make it so nice and neat. I'm going to make it up and down from outside the border, inside the border. And then you can see how my line did not exactly follow the line that I showed on the diagram when we first did it. See, it went in, it went out, it went above and, be, and beyond. Okay. And that's all we have to remember to do. Always remember to do that part. You know, art is, is really subjective, um, too. So you always want to keep your antenna open to new things that come your way. As you're drawing, you may see uh, an interesting shape develop. And when you're beginning, you may get scared. You may get a little nervous, but you say, all right, Mr. Mike said to be brave, and I'll leave it in there. So you just leave it in there and see what happens. And if it doesn't happen to anything, you just erase it. That's all. Just erase it, but just have fun with it. That's, that's really the key. All right, so we have this nice big one right here on the side, right there. Try to bring it a little closer here. Here we are. And here, on the right side, which is about the two o'clock to five o'clock level, we have another pedal right there. Okay. And what we're going to do is do a system of pedals all the way out. All the way out. Not hard to do. Just follow, most importantly, just follow the subject and then follow the guide that you already established, which is most important. Okay. And you see, no. If the if the rose was a clock. I just added a piece and it was around seven, eight or nine o'clock right in there. The other one was around one, two, three o'clock. Okay. The, the beauty about it was when you paint it, especially in oil, is that you have such a refined mixture of yeah. small, delicate strokes besides large broad strokes, which are wonderful, but they require different thicknesses of paint and also um, dilutions of paint when you put them on to get them to stick, you know? And, uh, but they're beautiful. Once you do them, it'd be a really great article, Gary Jenkins, you should look him up on the internet. I learned how to do flowers with him many years ago and he was premier artist on television to teach how to do flowers. And uh, let me tell you, when uh, my friend Ron and I went to his, his workshop, by the way, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a piece right on the top here, along the top. Okay, see? 
and uh, we walked into his workshop at this um, place called Hobby Crafts, which is in uh, New Hampshire. It was in New Hampshire at the time. It was an art, an art store. And he had, oh, at least 12 or 15 of his paintings, full size paintings. I mean, 20 by 24s, wall frames, all along the perimeter of the class. And you know, when you were going to the class, how your ambition was so much, much ahead of your skill. But you, you, you would do, give anything to paint a, a, a rose or anything that would look like a rose, a real rose on, on the. And he did it so effortlessly. And we almost all cried. I mean, it was just. We stood in front of the canvases and we could see the dew drops hanging off the leaves. And we were just in awe, in absolute in awe of what his, yeah. his, his, his skill was and his ability was. Yeah. And uh, he and his wife um, have, a, have a successful art business for years. Um, Catherine paints uh, tropical, uh, tropical parrots and he loves the flowers. So they, they hand off their colors to each other, you know. So, all right, so now we have, we've done a little bit of the side of the seven, eight, nine of the rows and the little two, three, four, one, two, three, four over here of the rows. Now we're going to the top here, which is about 10, 11, 12, right? Up that way. And uh, you just can't go wrong with a rose having petals. That's the whole thing. You just can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Now here's a separation here. I'm going to be separation here. And I'm going to, just put it in here. I'll go for the big one, which is going to be like the canvas. All right. There's a big one right there. Okay. Now, if I was to paint these in a cluster, like some, I get a commission from somebody and they want me to do flowers or something like that, and they like a cluster, I would draw these out meticulously on a uh, what's called a quadruple primed duck canvas which is quadruple prime it means it's been coated with gesso four times and sanded down so it's as smooth as you can measure smooth as mine. so when you put those strokes on those strokes are definite and clear uh normal canvases are double primed they have little grooves you know like uh, the english muffin uh they call them those groove tops and stuff like that you don't have those you all fill them this, that's what you want with a floral. Nice and uh, what's called a, in watercolor, they call it a hot press paper. Nice and smooth. I mean, super smooth. No bumps, ridges, or anything like that. And you would paint with those. And that's, that really makes your job so much easier. So much easier. All right. I'm going to put another one right here. Right there. Another file. Another pedal, rather. Right there. And you literally can you can keep on going with this, by the way. You can right in the back here. If it's a fully bloomed American rose, you can you imagine how large I get. important thing is to not make these, you don't want to make them echo each other. You don't want them to exactly look exactly like the previous edge. So if this one dips down, have this pop up, okay? Dip down, pop up. That's what we want. I've never grown roses, but I can imagine as beautiful as they are, they're probably just as difficult to grow them. Um, I'm really, on my travels over the years, I've seen so many beautiful gardens, taking pictures of them. Spent a lot, they spent a lot of time including awards and stuff for their local towns and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a cylinder a cylinder is basically a tube. 
to give support to our rows, okay? And you're gonna notice how off I go off the center and come down. Yeah. Yeah. That those lines, those crisscross lines really help to prevent you getting too stiff, you know, too linear. Everything's got to line up just right and everything. You know, you hardly ever want to put your subject in the center of the picture. Unless you're making a lot of money selling paintings and people don't care about the rules anymore. They just want your work. Then you, then you can break all the rules you want. But here, you want to really be careful. Try to stay within the rules because that shows to everybody who's in art that you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. And this actually is a good place for it here. Um, when we draw, when we paint, rules stay the same. You know, except with color, it's a, there's a few other rules. Yeah, but this is good. This is excellent. Good enough for it. Okay. And uh, on there, there's little nodules, the wooden peg, like that. Let's put the so what I did, I put a leaf, yeah, a leaf. It's one of the leaves that originally gave the plant enough chlorophyll to make the beautiful flower. Right? Some of them have fallen off. They didn't shroud it, right? Trying to make fall. So this is um this is good now. Alone itself, eh, it's okay. If you practice it, it's okay. But again, it's nice to put some other teamwork in here. Because we have to serrate the edge on it. it means we have to make a little bite marks on it because that's the way it rose is. So we're gonna do this. Let's see this separation here. Okay. So there's one with serration marks and one without. The ones with the serrated edges, that's more like a rose. <laughs> Now I'll correspond that also with the serrated edge on the first leaf that I did. That of course shows botanists that you know what you're doing. <laughs> you actually know what a rose looks like. <laughs> I made a mistake once very early on. With a, with a deer when I was painting. My very first show, back, way, way back, and those of you who knew this place will know how far back we went, anyways, is the Westchester Mall. And um, this is before the JV Mall up in St. Jefferson Valley. And I had a couple of really nice deer paintings that I, that I was very proud of. But unfortunately, I, I should have done a little bit more study on because. I had to learn the posture of the deer a little better based on emergencies. And the emergencies were like this. If, if a deer is in an emergency mode, basically, it flees and it tails pop up, like a tail, tail pops up like a flag. And that is a warning to all the deer around it and behind it that we have to get out of here. You know? Well, I had them milling in the field and I had half of them with the tails up half of them with tails down and they um about three quarters of the day went through and finally this guy comes over after he was looking at them and he goes um hi you did you do these paintings i, I said yeah i did he goes yeah they're good he goes you got one problem though he goes uh i'm a deer hunter he says the tails don't go up on a deer until they're running away i went oh no <laughs> oh no that's not good so for them, from then on, whenever I did any more public work, I made sure and I scrutinized that it was going to be accurate, you know, like that. So 
He actually bought one. Could you believe it? He was such a gracious man. He actually said, you know what? I Don't worry about it. It's okay. This one has very little. He said, I've got some paint home. I'll just paint that tail out with the, with the leaves behind it. <laughs> so here, here's a leaf. Because I'm going to go opposite, right? Opposite. Compositionally, it looks real nice, okay? Probably looks real nice. You know, like that. And we'll make another leaf cluster coming out from the back. And we'll make. Like so. <laughs> Just like that. And you know, if you do eventually take up doing floral painting, you, know, you don't have to be what's called a representational artist. I mean, you don't have to paint every petal to make it look real, right? Or to have the customer enjoy it or a person enjoy it. You want to get the essence of, of the of the, the essence of this is yes, yeah, there are a lot of petals, but you don't have to worry about getting all the way down into the center. You just want to get that red up and get that red bright, you know, in relation to everything else. You know? So you can make it a little bit softer in design, yet still have that essence, you know, of it. So your your choice is not just doing them photographically or not doing them at all. You can do them in between. You know, it makes it, it makes it much more fun. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look around here and I'm going to look at my cross hatch that goes through my, my rows. And I want to begin to just Take away the cross hatch that's in the rows. <laughs> when you do florals, um, as in a lot of things, you want, variety is important too. I mean, you could do a whole bunch of these all looking straight at you, but. Mm. Yeah. Well, you're learning. It's okay. You know, it's okay. It's doesn't matter. You want to eventually learn how to turn the look, turn the flower a little bit. Maybe what what is a what does a rose look like when it's full in bloom? It turned down a little bit when the when the center is pointing down. That's a, that's a good thing too. You put one right in front of the other like that. It looks really great. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Now, to um, complete the, the complement of background leaves, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about 10 o'clock, another cluster, but I'm going to only have the top of the leaf shown here. So we have some activity on it. And you do want to get rid of that line because it, it can, in the beginning, be quite distracting when you're moving on after you've done that section. Unless you find it necessary for the background too, then don't. Don't erase that, those parts. Leave those if you want to. Make it very important, you know. When you're practicing too, um, good to try to do different subjects, but not in the overdose. Uh, you you want to 
try to learn to do something, learn it, learn it to do it reasonably well, and then move on. All right? And then do the same thing, move on, move on. You never want to stay in one subject matter. It's, it wastes your time a lot. And uh, you have plenty of time to just practice all different types of art, you know, art forms and stuff. And you want to, I was teaching a lady that was in, uh, in, in, in this, um, with Lincoln, it says over here in California Road and years ago, and she, all she wanted to do was do uh, beach, beach scenes, beach scenes, beach scenes, beach scenes, and then finally the call came in for her to do something a little bit more like cityscape, and she panicked uh, because she really didn't do very well with people and buildings. So I went to show her how to do architectural building and get that settled and then put a person in it and stuff like that. You know? So we try to try to always try to create a variety in what you do. <clears throat> now we can decide back here. And what's nice about this is that you can create a little bit of vignette here if you wish. Back here, what we can do, we get a little help. So that fills in the background. Mm -hmm. One tool besides good pencils you want to have in your box, your drawing box, you also want to have a nice quality black fine tip marker. And what I mean by that is if you, if you actually fill in your colors into the petals, you can outline each petal with that fine black marker. It makes it pop, makes it pop right out, you know, which is really what you're looking for. You're looking to stand out. And now I have with me, as I'm sure some of you do, the handy dandy Crayola color pencils. And uh, it's a series of 12 and 24. I have the 24, but we'll just use ourselves in for the uh, The 12, 24 is nice. It comes with gray also, which is good for bark. And let's see. I have my gray here. Where did you go? I need it here. Yeah, here we are. This is great. Okay. Now, if you need something for it to from it to grow from. The rose again up to you totally up to you if you want it to grow from something you know the ground or it's going to be like a vignette type thing type of thing. <laughs> looks like it's on a portable stand here being held up i'm going to erase my bottom piece here what you can do is simply
just to show you what it would look like. Let me bring my in for you. Okay. Uh, what you can do is you can create long strands of grasses down there, just in this section. You want to go all the way over, because then it'll defeat the purpose of the vignette. Okay. Okay. I don't want to do too many of them because they'll contaminate the color that I put in there, which is a green. They'll make it a little bit more silvery green and it doesn't look very good. So what I'll do is if I'll, I'll just show you with my yellow green. Which I know it's here. This is a nice yellow green. It's like an apple green almost. Yeah, it's like an apple green. Matter of fact, it is. And what I'll do is I'll do not stiff, not uh, 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 but nice up flowing, like an airplane taking off from the tarmac, right? Start solid and then lift, lift, lift. And then cross hatch them a little bit. Have some cross in front, right over the, the bottom of the stem. Okay. Just to give it some storyline. It's not just sitting there. May I ask how uh, how everyone is doing? You can give me a you give me up down, up thumb sign or are you okay? I didn't leave you in the dust, did I? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, it's 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 very sometimes drawing is a lot of work, but it's it's worth it. It really is. It's worth it. Um. <clears throat> Most of the time when I do coloring, I don't really color in thoroughly. That is, I don't bear down on my color and just try to scrub in the color every inch. Or, you know, I, what I do is I hold my pencil very softly and say back here, the sky, I can do this. I can um, take, my supporting line, get rid of that. Bye bye. Okay. No more lines. No more lines, right? Now I can take my thing here and what I'll do is I can put patches of blue that'll complement the patch of color, which will be the red. You know, softly I do that, right? I'm doing a diagonal. See the diagonal? No, no, no. Long strokes, okay? long strokes. The white spots that you leave open could be little bits of clouds, maybe be beginning of beginning of clouds or like that. Yeah. Uh, have you ever done watercolor pencils with me? That leads to a whole other form of expression. Then you really can go to town and go crazy. Uh, you can get these to melt together, these colors that are so pretty. You have some of these red rows bleed off into the landscape and make it look very tactile, you know, very, very good. And okay. So that's one technique for that. And then what you can do is um, You want to remember to begin always with the weakest and the lightest color that you're going to put in the spot, right? So for instance, I already know it's daylight, it's bright, sun is out, wherever it may be, but it's out. It's, going to, it's also going to influence the color on that leaf. Well, I know I want to put the brightest color in because if I put the darkest color on first, 
when I put the yellow green on, it's not going to work. It's going to not adhere to it. So I try to color with even. I can even go double. I can go yellow. I can go yellow and yellow green before I even put a darker green on there, right? Which gives it a little bit more life. So remember, very big rule when you're coloring with color pencils, if you're going to do multiple colors in one spot on top of each other, start with the lightest color first. You can, how do you determine which color is the weakest color? Just take your piece of paper, take your colors, and overlay them, each one, and see how much effort it is to take one to show up against the other one. And then you'll know. You'll know. Believe me. You will know. All right. Some of these are erasable if you draw if you do them lightly. The Crayolas have been pretty successful with that as long as you don't do something too hard, too difficult. Okay. Okay. I'm going to finish up with my leaves here. Because I know I'm going to go to my go to my little twig. Good to also remember your colors, your primaries, which are primaries, which aren't. So will give you the right proper colors that you want. Usually you'll find that it's a little bit easier to understand when you do wet colors like oils, acrylics, watercolor. Put a few twigs out here. Generally, the colors stay bright on everything above. A, a dark area, like a shadow area, like if this was a forest, the colors would be brighter on the top of the trees than they were down at the bottom. Yeah. Again, showing you real perspective, aerial perspective of how things would look. Let's see. I don't know if any of you have had a hard time getting a decent razor or a uh, different sharpener, decent sharpener lately, but they seem to be in really poor supply. They just chew my pencils up terribly. And uh, even the electric sharpeners, they burn out so quickly. Okay. 
some soft red violet right down there. Okay. Of course, we're going to have the violet. I put, I put a little bit of red violet in here, too. That's a nice little touch of the red family. I'm going to start putting some red in there. Yeah. Generally, your sky is darker at the zenith, that means above, than it is on the horizon. But again, those rules can be broken because you never know when you're going to want to break those rules. Of course, you want to have a nice dark against the light that appears at the bottom, and it's not what you want. Well, sometimes you have to just break those rules and give it a try. People buy painting for so many different reasons. Let me tell you, when I was teaching at Friedman's many, many years ago, uh, we used to have workshops crazy every weekend, and people would be buying frames and canvases and approaching me to do something for them or whatever. And I, probably the biggest thing I heard was I wanted to match something that's in my room, and it wasn't the subject at all. So we ended up probably, I ended up probably doing more paintings in lavender and hmm. very strange. Very strange. It worked out. Okay, now we're going to go to my brown, and we're going to start doing our brown. I always start light, and then build it up, okay? Much safer. Because by and large, they're not really erasable. Some, some of them are, the lighter ones, if you don't press too hard, and you don't put too much content on the, on the paper, you can get rid of them. Dark and neutral. I'm going to freeze it away with my, my green. Oh, yeah. I can't trust anybody. 
Now, now we can start putting in some color on the flower. Okay. Now you can take this to whatever extent you are at home. Ideally, we want the red darker in the middle than we do on the outside edges. Okay, because that'll give us a better better perspective. And Hi, Matt. See, I just do a very light dusting. Dusting, dusting. My comment is coming in. Ta da! Slowly but truly. Work my round outside edge. Sometimes I like to work it so that the way they grow, they go from the center points like a fan outward. Yeah. I want to give you a heads up, and this is not a black marker, this is just gray and black. But what you can do is, and this goes through the same in comic books. Comic books, and we have pretty much morning comic garment. We love to have things pop out at us. And uh, the way you can do that is you take your black pencil. And then I do the same thing with this one too. Here's a black marker. It would really stand out magnificently. Let me do this. These are great to do on con cards and stuff. Let's take cards. Romance. <laughs> okay. So what are we doing? What are we doing?
The black marker will definitely stand out. I'll just pop around a little bit here. I'll go to a very soft lime green in the, in the grasses back there in the other hill. This is very colorful. And just keep coloring and make sure you get the proper red though. That's the, if, if it, you don't have the proper red, there's two of them. One's a red orange and one's a red. So make sure you get those in there. All good. And continue round. I know this was a little ambitious, ambitious time, but don't worry. Make it easier as they go. <laughs> yeah, just the repetitiveness of it, that's all. And then Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Mm. 
It's a lot of work. I think I've had my right arm workout today. Only mackerel. <laughs> well, this is good. This is a good one. And you notice we didn't put anything really in the rest of the picture. We didn't have to. I mean, you can put. You can put some grasses in here, maybe, maybe a little stream rolling by, you know. A stream rolling by. Hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.